The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters was originally broadcast on May 14th, 2024. It's time now for Business Matters, brought to you by the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And now, here's your host, the president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce, Pam Tumpop. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Pam. Hey, good morning, Gary. How are you today? I'm doing good. It's a nice overcast day. We had some nice rain over the weekend and making Maui oh, green good. again. Amen. <laughs> Keeping Maui green again. <laughs> yes, we're very blessed. You're absolutely right. And thank you so much for all that you do for our show. We so appreciate you. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Business Matters. I'm Pamela Kimpop, president of the Maui Chamber of Commerce. And today we are going to speak with Council Member Yuki Lei Sugimura. And then we are going to have a talk with Shay uh, Fausto. Fausto is a wildlife biologist and small business owner of Advanced Wildlife Education, LLC. So we're going to have some great conversations this morning. Hope you'll enjoy uh, listening in. But let me just first introduce you to our upcountry councilwoman, our dynamo, Yuki Rei Sugimura, who is the vice chair of the Maui County Council, chair of the Budget, Finance, and Economic Development Committee, and she hold, has been holding the uh, county upcountry council seat for the uh, residency area. And how many years has it been, Yuki? This is my eighth year. Eighth year. Oh, fourth, my goodness. I'm in my fourth term. Yes. Yeah. We, <laughs> I remember when you were just running. That seems like just, I don't know, a yeah. year or two ago. <laughs> I know. A so long fast time. time has gone by, you know. Yes, and so many things so many. Are really, I mean, during this time, you know, from COVID and, and uh, yeah. of course, the wildfire. Not so, a lot of so many things. Yeah, lots of challenges, but, you know, the likes of which we hadn't really ever seen before. Um, you, you've been, you know, on the front lines, and, and you were there. I was testifying yesterday. Um, it's been an yeah. amazing a different coming. budget season this year. You want to share a little bit about how the budget's been going and, and all the things that you had to look at mm. and plan for that are different this year from things we've seen in the past? Yeah, so... Um... As you know, by charter, we received the mayor's budget, proposed budget, on um, March 25th. <clears throat> and then the council had, you know, the following week to kind of review it and, you know, get familiar with what the mayor is proposing. And then through the whole month of August, I'm sorry, whole month of April, um, during the weekdays, we held um, meetings regarding the, the document and, and basically heard from all the departments. We heard what they were proposing um, in the mayor's budget and the members got to ask the department's questions and yeah. um, that's deliberations. And the, the fi final week in April, then we go through um, decisions week and this is the council members, the budget um, director, and then us. And we just, you know, tear apart basically the mayor's budget and amend it and add or subtract, you know, add or delete items that um, we learn by going through deliberation. So it's a process that we do every year. I, Pam, if I could figure out how to make this shorter, I would. Um, <laughs> but I think, that, I think that we need to hear from the, um, the departments. And then at every single meeting, um, the community is, can, can also testify. Um, what we did bring, what I did bring back as a budget chair, I brought back the, the district meeting. So we flew to Lanai, Molokai, um, Paia, you know, er every community in our residency areas and had meetings with the um, constituents so that we could hear what they're saying in terms of what their priority is. So COVID didn't allow us to do that. Was that stopped during COVID? But I brought it back when I became the budget chair, which I, I value because then we actually hear and, you know, we hear from the residents directly. So those are the kind of things that we do. Um, that's the, the process. And Pam, thanks yesterday for testifying because you have a loud voice to represent businesses. And um, what we did do yesterday was we set rates and fees and um, fuel tax 
as well as the real property tax. Um, and that's, that's the meeting that um, you testified yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was really interesting for us to be reviewing the real property taxes this year in that um, for a long time, our levels have, have kind of hold, held, and, and now there's such a swing in valuation that you have to really look at the rate, but also really understand how the valuations have gone up. So so even at a level rate, just with the valuations going up, the tax burden goes up. And, and I know you folks have really done a, a lot of uh, soul searching and work on that because, you know, we're seeing, we've seen over through COVID and, and a lot of people purchasing land on Maui and, of course, with our housing crisis, really wild swing. Yeah. It's been um, tough, right? I mean, yeah. going from COVID, as you know, and then I thought, oh, good, we're getting back to a nor you know, normal uh, yes. in the community and you know the way that we uh, conduct our daily lives, right? And then came the August eighth wildfires, and Pam, that changed all of our lives. Even if you know you didn't live up country or if you didn't live in um, West Maui, because the financial impact and uh, um, impacts to our residents were just just devastating. Um, yeah, as you know. So the budget that we passed uh, reflected our concern for the wildfires as we added um, funds to affordable housing for um, <clears throat> a housing project um, in West Maui, and we we did a thirty well, thirty how much they want eighteen million thirty six million loan. Uh, for Ikaika Ohana, for Kaiuli Okupuohi, and that's by Star Noodle in Lahaina, um, uh -huh. an um, area that is probably familiar to many. But um, yeah. so we we appropriated thirty six million dollars for a loan to that project, as well as we um, we actually bought land from we bought the project. So we spent three point one million dollars in terms of you know buying land and then. You know, we'll have a long-term um, um, commitment to that project, um, but that was that was you know a very very um, important um, that project. Um, so the affordable housing yep. fund did that as well as for the general excise tax, which we all started collecting um, a half a percent in this new calendar year. So. Um, the GET that we estimated for this this fiscal year, which will be, um, which will end on June 30th of next year, was 60 million, and of that, we allocated for wildfire permanent disposal site, um, 33 million, um, and we did very importantly water infrastructure repairs, wastewater uh, repairs, um, of another almost 17 million. So that those were the what we saw in terms of um, the wildfire and how we can help, you know, uh, fiscally. And then we also did another $5 million for roads and um, sidewalk repairs and um, caused by the wildfire. And, and again, these are all West Maui. Um, and then their sewer system also, you know, was impacted. So another $5 million for that and $8 million for storm damage um, impacted by, you know, the green infrastructure flood control improvements, and um, and then we did at the towards the ending of of our decisions, um, we put in about eight million dollars to the office of recovery, so that when they work on projects, there'll be that eight million that they could you know allocate towards um, recovery from the wildfire, um, and very strong support for MEMA, which is the Maui Emergency Management Agency, of of which, you know, we have a brand new, um, I call him Chief Amos, but administrator, <laughs> and um, and you know, there's $14 million in there for Maui Emergency Management. So we're trying to strengthen that organization because it plays such an important role. Um, yeah. And the um, other question that uh, we got from the community is, that if the nonprofit took a hit with the cuts because of, because of the um, because of the wildfires, and 
in, in general, the nonprofits remained unchanged. There were some that had a 5% cut from the um, mayor's budget, um, which which we left. Um, and so therefore, you know, there was some of, some of that impact. And you know, Pat, um, one of the things that I wanna just kind of say to nonprofits is that next few years, our budget is, is going to be very tight. And that I would like to ask nonprofit to please reach out and be um, aggressively fundraising to sustain your services. Um, there are nonprofits that get funding from the federal government, you know, um, through the to the state and to the um, Department of Human Concerns, which is a new department that was established by bifurcating human concerns and housing, but. Um, for those, you know, they get federal funding, um, and there are some that re rely on the county heavily for um, to sustain your organization. And please, please look at what you're doing because at some point we won't be able to be, um, you know, a financial resource for you that maybe you have have realized in the past. So those are some of the things that we saw budget wise. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I want to say uh, we were we were one of the ones that um, with with like the Made in Maui County Festival um, took a five percent hit, and and actually we felt that was you know we we felt that that was uh, very reasonable given what the county is looking at, and it was something that I think as a nonprofit you can look at and say, you know, we we immediately went to our budget said okay, well. So you know, so it gives us time to start planning on how to make that up, right? And and mm -hmm. and uh, people who who took some hits will can take a look and say, you know, how can we make that up? I I think um, it's really important to also say that with the reason we're granted nonprofit status is because of the level of giving, right? The federal mm -hmm. government recognizes that. That you, you know, with, with, that you are given uh, the tax relief break because you have constituents who value your service so much that you know you you received a lot of donations, and that doesn't you know in 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 our case what we always say is uh, there's so much great giving for social services. I used to run Mali United Way, so you see how much outpouring. Uh, business sector it's tough because <laughs> people think oh wow. businesses make so much money that they're just surviving, but they're really hurting. Um, so we're partnering very closely yeah. with the NC. But, you know, I think yeah. that... I, right. I agree we, with you, Pam. Yeah. It, it, it's time. We need to, you know, it, we're going to all have to... We all know. Uh, we haven't even seen the losses yet, um, but we know that losses yeah. are coming. Um, it, it, we have to be prepared to, to tighten our belt. That's part of a resiliency plan that we all, I think, need to look at and um i just want to say how excited i am about the investment that you made both in land and in putting housing out in west maui because we heard over and over and over again that people from west maui want to stay in west maui now mm -hmm. i did hear of some you know who had elderly family members who said you know maybe Connolly or what we could um, to be close to the hospital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the majority of people I talked to said they really wanted to stay out in West Maui. And we are so appreciative of projects uh, on that side to help those impacted by the wildfires. And yesterday... Yeah, I, no, I, I think what has, not, what has not been um, said or maybe you need to speak to um, the state side, of the legislature, is that the HHSDC, the state is focusing on bringing back Front Street, um, Lahaina Surf, and another property that's connected to Hale Maha um, uh -huh. right in that area on Front Street. And there's three properties um, that the state is focusing on and bringing that back. So the county, we have a, a small portion of the big picture um, for that housing, but the state is um, working on that and made it their priority. Um, Hawaii HHFDC, right? Hawaii Housing Finance Development um, 
indigency, which is the state, you know, the, the money part of housing, the money organization yeah. for housing, um, in the, you know, with the state, state of Hawaii. So, um, and as you saw, the governor did a groundbreaking for land for 450 units, um, which is above the civic complex, Lahaina civic complex. Um, I, I don't know the name, but, um, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, there's 400, 450 temporary houses yeah. coming up and they're targeting, um, 8 August for completion. Um, and then I think Kaiser, Hoff, Kaiser opened up their clinic in West Maui that same day, as well as, um, that week there was, um, another housing project that broke ground and. As you know, in Maui Lani, the temporary houses, there was one resident that moved in, I think now two Mondays ago, but there's going to be 50 units at Maui Lani that's coming up. And so these are all the things um, that are happening in the community um, to try to support the wildfire, you know, uh, temporary housing or the state, you know, project of, you know, the rebuilding Front Street area and, um, you know, bringing that back. So. There's a lot going on, um, and the county is just a small portion. And I'm so grateful to the legislators, um, Representative Yamashita, who's the finance um, chair um, in the House, as well as um, Donovan Delacruz with Ways yeah. and Means in the Senate, and Troy Hashimoto, um, <clears throat> who's on the committee. I mean, has worked really hard to, you know, allocate. I think the legislature. Um, allocated like close to a billion dollars to help uh, West, uh, West Maui and our wildfire <clears throat> on, on devastation. Um, so there's been a, a lot of focus on Maui County, basically, and of course, you know, West Maui um, through the state legislature. So I want to, you know, thank them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we're hoping to have them on the show too, because Boy, there was so much going on this legislative session. Uh, I mean, yeah. just bill after bill after bill dealing with the wildfire. And it was so great to see such strong statewide support. And, you know, and yeah. everybody coming together. Um, and, and, and the, all, you know, the reason it was we were laughing because so many of the bills had similar ideas, slightly different mm. but similar ideas. But you could see everybody trying to come up with solutions. Mm. And, and we and we're kind of saying if we could just condense some of these, can we move some of this into this one? And how do we get, you know, um, on similar ideas from ten to to one or two? You know, the best of the best. But but it was amazing to see uh, the unification for Maui this legislative mm -hmm. session. And one other thing, you know, Pam, um, that the legislature has the authority to do is that I have a great concern, as I'm sure you do because of who you represent about insurance. Yeah. So, and just, you know, I did go to a meeting up country and Gordon Wong, I think is his name, he's the insurance commissioner. Um, so, you know, he spoke about that and their, you know, basically their limitations because they have to follow statutes. And then this latest legislative session, um, there were some bills that were trying to address that. And, and the fear is, yeah. of course, that, you know, insurance companies, because of the wildfire it's going to pull out of Maui um, or even the state of Hawaii just because of the potential um, liabilities, you know, and and what what happened. Basically, it's, um, it put us on oh, his name is Gordon Hole, sorry, insurance commissioner. Um, and and so basically, you know, um, I was glad to see that the legislature was thinking about that already because it's something I don't know. I don't think I'm not too sure what passed on that i need to do some research and maybe you know but um there is work that needs to be done in that realm um you know and how it affects us in the long term so yeah they were looking at funds to help shore up you know um have the state help shore up insurance and i, yeah. I off the top of my head too i can't remember what what the amount of funding was but it was substantial um we're already hearing uh, yeah uh new new uh, rates coming through and people are getting their real yeah. uh, thing, astronomical rates. Um, you know, just huge jumps. 
but uh, well, I shouldn't say astronomical. Uh, they're pretty high jumps, significantly <laughs> astronomical hikes, I guess. But um, in some cases, you know, affordable. It's just really expensive, and people are going to have to budget for that. It's the kind of thing that you know it it hits you really hard in year one, and you're going to have to really think through that moving forward. Uh, but again, if, as we see uh, the claims continue, uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I think that's a huge worry. We, you know, we saw that. I, re I remember years back when we, uh, you know, had all the losses due to the volcano on the Big Island, mm -hmm. and so you know we mm -hmm. we had such huge losses over there that you started to see insurance companies pulling back or out. So um, it's going to be one of those things that definitely has to be watched. You know, the other thing is that we've seen, and I'm sure you know, just a landslide of both commercial and residential rents go up exponentially um, in a way that is not sustainable long term. Uh, in the commercial realm, though, it's really hard to bring rents back down once things start getting rented at much higher rates. So it's it's something that we're watching very closely mm -hmm. as we try to get businesses back into places they can't afford, get them settled again, uh, and having them return to business. It's a big challenge that we're seeing, you know, many displaced and businesses reading the island because our visitors haven't returned to the level that we had thankfully gotten back to after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope to get there again at a um, but we, with the changes, with the, with the, uh, the uh, you know, also uh, changing how we help our folks, putting people into the condo towels until we can get housing and doing other things, it's going to be a longer call. So it's it that's going to be another thing that we're watching really closely. Is how are the businesses surviving? Thankfully, we were able to get an extension on the idle loan. Uh, which was supposed to end May 10th, which is the economic injury loan for those who weren't directly impacted, but are mm -hmm. seeing an economic injury to their business. So that has now been extended to November 9th. Um, oh, good. And we work with the SBI people, mm -hmm. but they never extend the night alone. <laughs> but uh -huh. they have extended it, which is apparently our situation is unique. Uh, I was told that by one of the SBA reps yesterday. Uh, but we'd ask that it be extended because people are still finding out. Um, businesses are still finding out having just done their taxes, having waited for grants, um, having found that, you know, a lot of business grants were not available, that they really need those loans. And for those who need those business loans, we now have till November 9th. And call us at the chamber. We're happy to help you. Uh, you know, there's, there's been so many things that have really... Uh, come out of this and one of the things I think that you know if you remember for years we didn't take the general excise tax the, the additional percentage we could have taxed on at Valley County um, but now we have and so it's, it's interesting to see that we've now got uh, 60 million to help replenish that affordable housing fund I had heard there'd been a recent draw on that and by quite a bit is that is that accurate wait what did you say you heard that there was a recent what that, that we had a lot of activity, that for years there hadn't been a lot of activity on that affordable housing fund, but there'd been a lot of activity recently. So it sounds oh, like yeah. the new money going in with the tax will be a huge help. So the affordable housing fund, um, with what the mayor put in, um, basically what is happening is that um, it, it, it was being, it is being used for, um, to build that housing project that by um that I mentioned early on. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it's, those funds are being used for um, Kupuohi and as well as you know buying the land from that um, Big Lee project or Ikaika Ohana. So you know, there's there's things going on as well as um, fifteen million that was put in to purchase um, or. Yeah, I guess it was a grant. It wasn't a loan to Pulelehua, which is right by the Kapalua Airport. So, uh -huh. um, you know, there's activity going on, as, you know, focused on West Maui um, that was done, you know, with the Affordable Housing Fund for West Maui. 
I'm glad that they ended up being alone. I know they were they were looking for a trans initially, but I'm glad that ended up being alone. But they, you know, great. they were able to also move forward quickly, which was great. Yeah. For which project are you talking about? Pulele Hua. Oh, so Pulele Hua project, um, that project doesn't have water. So I'm not too sure how they're going to proceed. Um, no? And I was hoping, I was hoping that we would um, support because money is so um, hard to come by, you know. Um, I was hoping that we would support projects that are kind of shovel ready, ready to go because we yeah. have a huge housing need and, you know, in West Maui. And although the state is coming forward with their projects, you know, their projects are going to take a little bit longer um, because it, you know, was completely devastated. The, the front street section, um, yeah. the behind the surf and that other project. So those three coming up will take a little bit longer. But I was hoping that we would, you know, um, use our funds in very targeted ways so that it could, you know, it could build for the yeah. families that, you know, want to stay in West Maui, as, as you said in your opening, you know. Yeah, that was really important. I was there yesterday in the Brand Zone for the first time, and mm. we drove past, um, you know, I, I saw for a time the last of Ali Mahalo's facility. And, you know, everything we saw, all of that street and toured areas and some housing areas. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, devastating to see. I'm sure you yeah. can see it. And, you know, in yeah. all of this, Pam, I'm sure you, you saw it and feel it is um, how wonderful people are still, you know. Yeah. I think we saw it up country um, right after the fire when I drove through my community and everybody was helping each other. Uh, each other. And yeah. your stories, yeah, uh, beautiful stories. Sure. Yeah, and, and I, I'll say that we the the lead for our tour were FEMA uh, representatives mm. who are doing such an amazing job, not only in telling the heartfelt stories and and uh, you know and and some of the things that people had to work through, but also our history. And they mm -hmm. had a binder of the, all of the historic sites, and and you know some on the tour weren't you know even though it was all local folks, not everybody was familiar with all of the sites in Lahaina, so they they were giving us a, a cultural history tour, and doing a great job, mm -hmm. uh, really really doing a great job of it. Um, it was it was amazing to see, it. and they've all said they're, you know they've seen many disasters and they've worked on many, and some of them have been deployed for. For months and months on end, other different mm -hmm. locations. Uh, but they now they they have such a real love for Hawaii and Maui. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, as you know, they started the debris removal up country, and then yeah. they completed it in December. And you know, through that, they they sort of used us up country like a pilot project or a test test bed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then they did the, you know, the, the they're still doing the massive uh, debris removal in West Maui, Army Corps of Engineers, and you mentioned FEMA. I mean, they've they've done a great job at incorporating the Hawaiian culture. Um, yeah. They have practitioners that go out with them every day, and they start off with a pule, and they end, you know, um, respectfully. Um, so, and if they find anything, there's a, you know, historian there that can. Um, do the appropriate thing and stop stop the debris removal until they get you know the um, cultural significant um, find um, taken care of. So there's a lot that yeah, it's so unusual that I got calls from um, uh, an inquiry from New York Times like what is it? What are you all doing? Yeah. Because they've never seen anything like it before, you know. So um, it is it is with great appreciation I have to thank. Bob Fenton with FEMA, um, Army Corps of Engineers, um, Corey Co Colonel Cougar, and you know a lot of the people that have been with us um, yeah. and have you know developed a program that we or the systems that we're using for this. So um, yeah, a lot of amazing people that have come to our rescue, really. And we have to thank uh, our senior senator Brian Schatz, who has been advocating for us. I'm sure you saw that, Pat. In Washington, oh, yeah. D.C., with, oh, you know, yeah. speeches on the floor about, you know, how we still need more CDBT 
um, disaster relief funds. And we're hearing that um, that has to be allocated or appropriated with the Senate for it to be designated. But we're thinking that Maui will get close to, and this is only for wildfire, but it would be um, close to $2 billion. So we're hearing all kind of different numbers, but um, it's going to be a lot of funds that will come and help with, you know, the, the uh, problems that we have in West Maui caused by the wildfire. Yeah. Yeah. So we are very grateful. When you, when you see it up close, I mean, we've all seen pictures, or I've seen pictures for months, and, and I've been on that side. I just hadn't been to the burn zone. But when you see the burn zone up close, you realize, you know, uh, very immediately what, you know, do you, you get this sense of how desperate things were and and how long it was going to take and uh, mm -hmm. then so much to rebuild and we're going to need all the help we can get um, and and I, I just thank our, our congressional team. Uh, they they all have been out here uh, you know, doing everything they can and, and uh, advocating for us and it, it's going to be a long haul but as you point out we're resilient. Our community is a caring community. I, I remember up country uh, immediately. Everybody up country started mowing everything. <laughs> you know, with the, with the wildfires, and everybody was loading each other equipment. Yeah, uh, that trees down, and you know, just in trees that needed to be taken down. Uh, and yeah, and you know, you know who um, through that there were you know many many people who came to the, you know, help and rescue of our neighbors. And yeah. um, Waipuna Chapel became a focal point for um, green waste removal and um, collection and helping with, um, the, they they reimbursed many of the people who had to pay green green fee, I'm oh, sorry, oh, our, yes, our fees yes, at the correct. landfill. So, the whole, yeah, how into the dump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it was really interesting, you know, just to see like a like a um, a heartfelt machine that came together. And Hawaii um, uh, CNHA with Kuhio Lewis, uh, I believe, is going to reimburse the uh, Waipuna Chapel about twenty five thousand dollars for all the you know r rental of equipment as well as you know the green waste fees that you know was paid out to many of the um, community members that helped uh, right after the fire. So it's so a really amazing stories, you know, um, happening out there in the community. So it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been wonderful to hear. Well, Yuki, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you. We're, we're excited to have you on. Thank you for all the tremendous work that you're doing. And um, you, thank you. So keep in touch oh, with us. We're going to look at real property tax rates from my, through my committee yeah. town. Good. We'll keep in touch. Okay. We, we, Talk to you later. We have new ideas based on valuations. <laughs> but thank you so much. You're doing an amazing job. Okay. And, you too. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. The journey. Thank you. Aloha. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick moment. Uh, this the top story is, as we bring Shay uh, Trausto, our wildlife biologist and owner of Advanced Wildlife Education LLC, on. Um, you know, this has been such a journey, and of course, we've seen so much devastation and heartache, and and we've also seen through this, so uh, a community who shocked even, you know, shocked even those who came to help us, because we banded together so early. We were ready. Systems were put in place. Uh, it showed the... Oh, is Shay on? Oops. Shay is on. Awesome. Aloha, Shay. Good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. I, I was just going to tell everybody a little bit about you, that uh, you are a wildlife biologist, an illustrator, mm -hmm. and owner of Advanced Wildlife Education, LLC. You have worked for the Maui Nui Seabird Recovery Project and then started your own business. In 2016, you wanted to do more to help so you combine your passion for wildlife and art in order to form a bridge for the community 
and conservation nonprofits by creating educational wildlife coloring books, which I have seen, and they are amazing. <laughs> Thank Tell you. us a little bit about this journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've always loved animals growing up. I had, like, wolf hybrids. Um, I grew up in, in Southern California, so I had, um, like, some reptiles, um, guinea pigs, but I've always loved wildlife, and then my pa- parents both worked for Outward Bound Adventures, so it would take inner city and, like, at risk out youth, uh, camping and uh-huh. backpacking, so I've always had a love for uh, the outdoors. Uh, I went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, where I studied biology and environmental studies, um, and then I worked forest service uh and last national forest working with like eagles and golf talks. um so i was on the ecology team there uh, and then i came out to maui in 2014 i was awarded a americorps kupu internship with the maui nui seabird recovery project ah that's what brought you to maui okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah, that's for about a three great years, project uh, we're working with the wawukani or the wedge tail shear waters uh, it's crazy. Those birds, they can dive 200 feet underwater and sleep and fly at the same time. Uh, but we did a lot of outreach. They burrow on the beach. Uh, and a lot of times people saw the holes and thought they were like rats or mongoose and would put trash in them or collapse the burrows. But once people found out it was seabirds, they got really excited and wanted to help. So and that's when I realized that education was most important. And then I've always loved to draw up that yeah, I can buy my passions and create my own line of uh, wildlife educational coloring books. So tell everybody, give people a sense of when, uh, where they can find the books, but what they're going to find inside the books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've done 24 different books. Um, in the books, I have, like, fun facts, diet, status. Uh, there's photographs. They all come with a custom sheet of stickers that I do. Uh, and then also there's a whole bunch of infographics. Like, a lot of people are usually scared about sharks, but on average, um, one person is usually killed here by sharks, 20 by cows, 40 by dogs. Most is like 160 by deer a year. And you yeah. have like graphs like that, uh, sustainable versus sustainable fishing, and where different introduced birds are from, uh, what different wildlife hotlines to call. And then I also developed uh, an app as well. Um, so it's like a digital coloring book. So it's like my lockdown project. Um, and, and and you've yeah. also been uh, creating these these amazing coloring books. Uh, you've been creating them in different languages as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had um, Kamaku Fritas. Uh, he did the translation in Olelo Hawaii, and I've also more recently done the books in Spanish and Japanese. That's fantastic. And where are you selling the books? How can people find them? Mm-hmm. So I'm at the Swap Meet. Um, my booth is 320. So I'm there every Saturday from 7 to 1. I also do the Gateway Show in Lahaina. Um, that one is 9 to 2. And then I have them uh, at the Maui Ocean Center, Haleakala uh, Volcanoes, National Parks, Pacific Whale Foundation, uh, Maui Coffee Attic. Uh, cool Botanical Garden, CVS, uh, Whalers, Bailey House Museum, Ululani's, uh, Maui Tropical Plantation, Bicerosa Garden of Eden, uh, Friends of the Library, yeah. Asagawa General Store, so, one of the different locations on the islands. Which I love. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, if you're not carrying this book, you can see that you want to. <laughs> if you're a retailer and you have space on your shelves, this is this is an amazing book that you want to carry. We, how about long? We need to get you in long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm at CBS. Or, um, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Walgreens and, mm-hmm. and CBS and long. Mm-hmm. And awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I think that's um, just amazing. and tattoos yeah. as well. Uh, so there's like temporary okay. tattoos. I have like mm-hmm. silver, black, gold ones and educational sticker sheets. So all my products are education uh, as well. That's fantastic. I think um, I, I really love seeing how people are doing more with um, sticker sheets these days and, and even doing more with decals and stickers and selling them. We first got to know your company through the Maiden Valley County Festival. We were so glad that oh, you had yeah. applied 
you know, for that. Um, mm-hmm. How did you do at the festival last year? Oh, it was great. That was my um, first time uh, being at the Made in Melly Festival. So, yeah, I'm really excited. That one, that one was great. Um, I've always wanted to go, so that was a huge accomplishment. And, um, yeah, a big thing I've been wanting to do for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we we were just in awe of your product. But, but for those who don't know, the show is a juried show. And we're always looking for, we always have room for new companies coming in, but we're always looking for unique and uh, diverse products. And so when we got to see the the coloring books, we were blown away. (laughs) So great artistic talent (laughs) combined with awesome knowledge. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, (laughs) appreciate it. Yeah, and, and so now I also understand um, that that you're actually even uh, exporting these products. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, last year I got a um, DBET grant um, for exporting. So I was traveling to different uh, book fairs around the world. So I went to book fairs in Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, hence the reason I had the books translated into Spanish. Uh, the London book fair in the UK. Uh, Frankfurt, Germany, as well as Montreal, Canada. So there I would go to these events. Um, I took my products and I was walking around looking for different distributors and printers, publishers um, to uh, collaborate with. So I was successful in finding a publisher in uh, Mexico as well as a distributor in London. So now books I've done one for Central America. Uh, so they're being distributed in Central and South America, uh, as well as uh, yeah. London and around the UK. Wow, I'm I'm so glad to see this. I mean, <laughs> this is, this is phenomenal to see that the growth of your company. I, I think it was started in 2016. So from 2016 mm-hmm. till now, uh, to see international distribution is fantastic. You've done an awesome job growing the business. Thank you. Yeah, the the end goal is to, I realize everyone everywhere should know about their local species, so just creating regional specific books and then just having them um, everywhere for everybody to learn about their native species. I feel like that's so important. Yeah. I can see see you're going to keep adding to the collection of books that you create, which is phenomenal, (laughs) leveraging that talent. And and now... uh, You've also got programs where you you're kind of con- you're now connecting with sort of a Maui school scene. Can you share a little bit about that with us too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do. Um, I've gone to schools and talked about native species or combining their passions and starting their own businesses. Schools like Mahana Intermediate and uh, Paia Elementary, uh, and then more recently, I've also become a DOE vendor as well. So, um, yeah, working well, on. Tell people what that what does that mean to be a DOE vendor? So, uh, where the teachers or educators are able to purchase the books um, from you for their classrooms. Uh, awesome. Like a, a book or for, yeah, that's... for the classrooms. So the teachers can actually put that. I didn't even know that the teachers got to put, make create their own budget for the kinds of books they want <laughs> in their classroom. But that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, always, um, I'm looking for a... Um, person actually to help I want to create a new book um, for sure. specifically for the classroom so um, I know there's different levels or um, word, um, different topics to go over so uh, a curriculum developer so to create a new book as well so yeah yeah well, I love that you're also on the front right lines helping our educators as they want to work with different curriculum, helping them figure things out and come up with something mm-hmm. that's unique to what they're doing. That's really exciting. Yeah, definitely. Great for all the visual learners. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love to learn visually, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it just makes things life so much easier when you can oh, quickly yeah, associate it and drawing, immediately in associate class. it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's spectacular. And then I understand now you're doing other new products, um, moving into some other new categories. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm definitely expanding more on the um, the temporary tattoos. Um, more stickers. I'm doing custom work as well. So more recently, uh-huh. I've been I'm doing uh, them for Grand Teton National Park, uh, oh. and I lost stuff for Joshua Tree. Wow. Uh, and then I want to get into pins as well. So that's my next big project. What was the last one? I'm sorry. Uh, I want to do pins, like kind of like enamel. Oh pins. yes, uh, enamel mm-hmm. pins. Yes, collectible pins. That's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's so, great. Super excited about and that. And clothing. What about clothing yes. with your awesome design? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, clothing as well. So I have uh, Razorbacks T-shirts. They're made out of 95 percent bamboo. So, uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's just sustainable, uh, UV protected, um, they're anti- naturally antibacterial, which is really nice, too. So, I call it orders, uh, and I also have my own clothing line. Wow. So, now, uh, how long have you lived on Maui? When did you first come to Maui? I know you started the business in 2016, but when did you first come here? So, I originally got here in 2014, uh, so that's when I Started out as the Kupu internship intern uh, with the Seabird Project. So, yeah. yeah, I was with them for three and a half years, and then I've been doing this. Uh, started in 2016, and then I've been full time since 2018. Um, yeah, yeah, that is a... amazing. Excuse me. We, have, we seem to have some dog noise. Speaking of animals, we seem to have some dog noise in the background here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, it's funny. I've done a, a book on dogs as well, and like the history of different dog breeds and how the domestication of the wolf mm-hmm. as well. So I have all different kinds of books. Oh, my God. Lion, that... dogs, cats. I can't wait to look. Yeah. yeah. Sharks, <laughs> even dinosaurs. I always get asked about dinosaurs. I have a prehistoric wildlife book. <laughs> oh my god well let, let's take a minute to talk about this thing is, uh, that you get some interesting books that i wouldn't have expected so i love the prehistoric dinosaurs i love the domestication of dogs and the different breeds what are some of the other 24 books that you've got out there yes i do uh sharks uh sharks and rays fish uh endangered species marine mammals uh, fish in the Pacific, so I have Malka, Makai, uh, Native Hawaiian, so I have three books that are specific uh, for Hawaiian. I recently did one with uh, Friends of Maywe for the Northwestern Islands, uh, North America. Yeah. Those are some of yeah. Central America, some more of the regions as well. Pacific Northwest, Sierra Nevada. I I would you know I would uh, do you ever do you ever go to any of these um, national gift shows where where you get to promote your product to people purchasing gifts for their stores I would think the zoos would would mm-hmm. want you to be creating books for them left and right yeah yes yeah. so I actually went to um, the zoo and aquarium association uh, they had their conference last year in Ohio so I went to that show. Um, I actually did get a couple of zoos and aquariums that way, um, including like the Aquarium of the Bay, Long Beach Aquarium, um, some in uh, Tulsa. Uh, so there's that show, and then the Public Lands Alliance. So that one's more for like the national parks. Uh, so I've been going oh. to those shows. Uh, I've been to the gift show in Tokyo, the Tokyo International Gift Show. Yeah, the outdoor retailer show. Yeah. Did you get to do that through DBIT? Uh, yes. Yes, the Tokyo International Gift Show. Yeah. That was, they did a great yeah, job. Yeah, that was really fun. To to- yeah. yeah, fantastic. I uh, did that in 2019, so in the Hawaiian Pavilion. Uh, yeah, that was, that was so much fun. That was great. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been before years ago, too, and it's an amazing gift show. It oh, blows yeah. your mind. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's nice because we do a great Hawaii pavilion there, our Department of Business mm-hmm. Economic Development Tourism. We call them DBED because that's the acronym, but um, they do a phenomenal job putting on a Hawaii pavilion and helping companies grow and and mm-hmm. uh, expose their products to new markets. And so it, it oh, sounds yeah, like they've was... really done great things to help your company grow and 
and um, yeah. before, but you're on fire. I love to hear this and, and see how you leverage different opportunities and funds through the state and and gone to shows and marketed this to different markets. Uh, another good for uh, you. Big organization that helped out too was uh, I was in the Mana Up Business Accelerator program. Oh, fantastic! In yeah, twenty twenty two. I was in the court That's seven. That's awesome. So. Um, there's 11 of us, but we got, I think, 140 businesses applied. So, it was, um, yeah, it was really great being in, in that program as well. It's really helped um, accelerate the business yeah. as well. We have some amazing uh, cohort programs going on in Hawaii mm -hmm. that we're very blessed to have that really um, are jettisoning some of our companies to new heights. So I'm glad to know that you benefit from that as well. That's fantastic. Thank you. Well, what's yeah. next? With all this going on, <laughs> and tons of and tons of projects already on your plate. Well, oh, what yeah, are you, what are you so much in the next just, couple of years? It's still just me, so <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, still, yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to wear all the hats, but um, probably, definitely moving more. I'm the man. I'm probably moving east more. Um, trying to get into more parks or national parks. Um, zoos, aquariums, um, as well. I want to do a book on uh, native plants. So that'll probably be my next um, project as well. One minute, Pam. Oh, okay. Thank you, Gary. Well, Shay, uh, I have been uh, enjoying this journey to learn all about oh. your amazing books. Thank you so much for being oh, on the you. show today. I appreciate it. Wow, that went by fast. <laughs> it, it did. Yeah, so we want everybody to look for advanced wildlife education. Uh, you got to hear all the different places that you can find Shay's book. Thank you so much, Shay, for joining us. And for all those listening in, thank you for being a part of our show. We hope you'll tune in next Tuesday. But in the meantime, blessings and aloha for a beautiful Maui week. Bye-bye.